Hi, welcome. It's the 11th of November, Remembrance Day. And um, so it's the night before brew day. And uh, I've been working on a, a recipe, continuing on the NEPA um, plan of action, trying to uh, make my perfect NEPA. Um, but on this occasion, I'm just using some different hops. I'm going to stay with the um, base where the uh, malts are concerned. Um, but I'm not going to be adding maltodextrin this time around. And um, so we'll just go through what's involved in this one. And uh, once we've had a chat about the recipe, we'll go up to the brew shed and uh, set up for brew day tomorrow. I'm going to get up very early so I can have a, a quick early brew day and uh, be finished in time for the rugby. Right then, glasses on. So, just run through the malts for you again. So it's four and a half kilograms of Marisotta, 400 grams of Carapils Caraform at 3.9 EBCs, 400 grams of Golden Naked Oats, 18 EBC, 400 grams of Wheat Malt Pale, and uh, that's 3.9 EBCs and 100 grams of melanoidin at 59 EBCs. Um, this is going to be a 22 litre batch. So hops, um, nothing for bitterness, obviously. The first editions is the 20 minute aroma hop stand, 50 grams of Motueka and 50 grams of Ruaka. Um, I want to try that Ruaka. I've heard them um, some good things about it. Um, Rick has been talking about that one on his uh, channel. He did a um, I think it was like an American Pale Ale, if I remember rightly, or a Smash of some sort. And uh, he, he thoroughly enjoyed the hops on that one. So we've got that for the 20 minutes aroma. And a day three. Oh, the third day I'm going to put some um, dry hoppage in there. 150 grams of Motueka and 150 grams of Ruaka. So when we get up to the brew shed, I'll explain um, how I'm going to go about doing that dry hop this time. Um, thank you very much for everybody who's talked, messaged about um, my little tips that I put up last time on putting dry hops. Some agreed, some didn't agree. I'm going to give it a go um, with that method. I've actually spoken to um, Brew Stories uh, and asked him and told him about what people had been mentioning to me. And um, he did mention that uh, it's best to do it um, earlier rather than um, allow the hops to suspend for days on end before I release the magnet and drop the hops in. But we'll talk a bit about uh, about that and uh, what I bought so uh, that's where we're at with that one um, I'm just going to go through the yeast uh, it's the Omega Yeast OYL052 um, Dipper Ale double IPA Ale um, some water treatments on this one on the mash for me it's going to be 1.76 grams of calcium chloride 3.8 Zero one of Epsom, uh, 1.76 of gypsum, and on the sparge, 0.64 of a gram of calcium, 1.1 Epsom salts, 0.64 of gypsum. Um, that's going to be fermenting at 20 psi, sorry, 20 degrees, um, and it should. Let's just go through the figures. Um, pre-boil gravity looking at 10.52 original gravity 10.59 final gravity 10.18 um, the IBUs on this is 8 so it's going to be really really juicy and then that's what I'm looking for um, don't want any bitterness really in it some will obviously happen but um, it's going to be very very low on the bitterness scale um, is there anything else that I need to 
No, so 25 litres in the mash and 9.12 litres of sparge. Um, and yeah, I've gone for the hoppy Nipa, um water style, so which gave me all those calcium chloride, epsom salt and gypsum figures. And I think I've covered mostly everything. Um, a 60 minute boil on this one. Um, in fact, I might even bring that down to 40 minutes. Um, but I'll discuss that tomorrow. But I've got it down here at 60 minutes and the sparge, uh, sorry, the mash itself is going to be at 70 degrees, um, which is higher um, than what I usually mash in at. Uh, and that's down to some advice on Andy Lynch's um, uh, recipe that he had uh, for the conflux. Um, I'm doing that next time because this yeast is a bit old and it's been in the fridge. So I want to get this yeast sorted. Um, and if you're if you're watching, so but I'm taking your advice and popping it on this just to see what's uh, um, what that's going to produce. So yeah, I think that's it, guys. Um, and nothing else really. Um, we'll pop up there and uh, we'll set up for a very early morning. Um, brew day I'll probably set um, a delayed timer for the um, strike water and hopefully when I get up it'll be already at a strike and I can just dump the grains in which will again help tremendously in me getting a quick um, finish to the brew day so uh, right let's get up Right, the grains have been weighed out. They're all in there, plus these pre-packed grains ready to go. So, just wanted to have a quick chat really about this dry hop. So do you remember when I said that I'd get some magnets on here? Well, I did get some, remember the small ones, they were weren't strong enough. Just put you down, guys. Here, oh, let me see. Put you here, put you here. right? So, I've got these like hooks as well on them. The hooks can be pulled off, they're therefore put it onto metal racking, and so you can hang things off basically. But wow, they are strong, very strong to be fair. So they would do the job and so I thought so I thought I'd put one inside and one on the lid but again this bell shape doesn't matter how strong it is there is a mighty gap I can't have it hanging down like this because otherwise the, this uh, would be touching the warts from day one and that's no good so I'm going to have to revert to dry hopping as I usually do until I come up with an, uh, another idea. Um, another thing I mentioned before coming up was that I wasn't going to put any um, maltodextrin in. That was because I didn't have any until I got in here, started to keep some grains that I had and found this bad boy. So this will be going in. Just popped it on the brew father app and it's changed um, the results somewhat obviously so the uh, scores on the doors um, ABV is going to be 5.4 well that's what we're heading for anyway so that malted actually be going in the last 15 minutes um, of the boil obviously and original gravity 1065 is what we're looking at and the final gravity 1024 so um ibus are still eight makes no difference even though it does say um no it doesn't say anything about ibus on that no that's it yeah so that's the additions extra additions i will pop it in because i don't want it to go out of date or anything although i've got some months left on it um i just don't want it to get out of date basically might as well use it uh, it's very cheap to buy and I'll just buy it as, as and when 
So another couple of items. Remember these? I'm going to try these on the next, on this brew, sorry. The Hop Boost. Crew Wolf to uh, told me about it. Oh, I was on his vlog, sorry. And it increases the range of hop flavour characters and aroma in beer through bio-transformation. Enhances the beer mouthfeel and drinkability. Reduces unpleasant harsh bitterness. Increases water fermentability. And how you should be putting this is whisk one file into half a cup full of water and thoroughly mix. Add to the beer at the start of fermentation. So in this pot that I bought, a three of these files. Not F-I-L-E-S, but P-H-I-A-L. So um, I'll be adding one of them. Next one. Pure brew. What difference is going to make? I don't know, guys. So neutralizes chlorine in uh, and chloramine in water, preventing off flavors in beer, wine, and cider. Feeds yeast to support healthy, strong fermentation and promotes a clean, pure commercial taste. Full disclosure: I purchased these. Nobody's given me these to try out, so you know I'm not that famous. Crush one tablet into five-gallon brew together with one spoonful of the powder. Add at the same time as the yeast, stir well, then leave to ferment. So obviously i got enough here for five brews. Those are the tablets. This is the powder and a little spoon, plastic spoon. So there's enough for five brews in there, so we'll also give that a go. Um, hoping it makes a difference. How I'm gonna tell if it's made a difference, I don't know, but I'll tell you if it's uh, um, made anything unpleasant about the beer anyway. Hopefully it should enhance the beer, not the other way around so so those are two new items um so yeah the dry hop we'll leave that for now we'll uh, continue to work on that um any ideas guys would be much appreciated especially on these um green father fermenter pros that's what i want to use it for um was there anything else no i think that's it so what I'm going to do now is give the uh, brew tools uh, machine here the, a bit of a clean, wash it through and um, I'll fill it up with water, put my water treatments in it overnight um, and also do the sparge uh, tank there as well, HLT um, and I will do, go through my um, little water meter just to show how that works for me it's bang on the money every time. One of the best things I've uh, purchased and fitted. So I'll show you that as well. And um, yeah, we'll fill it up with water and I'll try and find out whether or not um, I can manage to set the timer for tomorrow morning. Um, so this um, strike water will be ready for me as I um, suggested that I was gonna do uh, whilst I was down the bar before coming up here. Right then. I'll get this cleaned, all I'm going to do is put, run some water through it, make sure there's nothing dodgy in there. Um, I did give it a clean a couple of weeks back, uh, about a week ago, sorry. And um, So I just want to run some clean water through it, clean it out. And obviously as well, tomorrow will be the first time I brew with my new valve setup. Remember I did these, I did that, made it a bit more compact. So I'll be using that setup. Hoping that that's going to work well. There's no difference here. That valve system and uh, the HLT is exactly the same. But this is the water meter, guys. I'll uh, show you that in a minute. Okay, right. Let me clean. Be back in two seconds. I'm just um, filling the brew tools with water to clean out. That's a bit parched. 
my milk stout. It's coming to the end really um, of this keg. It's been a great beer. I love it. And um, wow, it's uh, still going strong right to the bitter end of that keg. I'll have to do this one again. It's, um, it's a lovely winter warmer. I'm really parched here. So, uh, as we say, guys, you should know by now. Yechida. Cheers. Bottoms up. However you want to say it. Oh. Hi, and welcome back. Right. Done my little bit of cleaning. Flushed everything out. Put some water through the system. So I'm ready to fill it in. So let me just take you how I program the little meter, the electronic meter to fill the exact amount of water that I want. Um, I've done this several times now. Um, and I'm very, very confident that it hits the mark every time. And it's especially um, a great thing for me in respect of the HLT. Now I can't see how much water's going in there and I'd have to be about seven foot five to have a look to see um, how much water's going in there. Um, so I'm really grateful that this piece of kit is here. So let's uh, just take you through it. Um, the blue hose, I would advise if you get, if you've got a hose filling up any of your um, brew kit, get the blue hose. That's for it's food grade. Don't use, you know, your standard hose pipe for the garden. It's not the healthiest things to to use. So uh, let's go on then. So right, let's set. Light comes on. Now this is the setting. So I want 25.04 in there. So I use these up and down arrows. So uh, all four. Uh, so set, two, three, four, set. All at our own. Next, I want 25, so that's five. So bring it down, six, five, set. And then up, 25.04 liters. This tells, well, I think this tells you how much going through the pipe as per minute or per li litres per minute or something. So just run. And then that's it. It starts filling straight away. Goes through this uh, solenoid here. And that opens and shut when it, re well, when it reads that there's 25.04 litres. So I should get, hit the mark here, 25, just over that really. Um, it takes a about a minute or so so I'll bring you back online just before we hit the mark so uh, as you can see guys 21.5 going at 14 basically litres per minute so coming up to the 25 point mark here water's filling up and it should stop at 25.04 bang that's it lads 25 and a smidgen 25.04, 25.05 and uh, it's bang on every time. Saves you a lot of faffing. I used to have to fill this bad boy. Three litre at a time, three, six, nine, and you could never get the point, whatever. So, works for me. If you ever get the opportunity, get one. It's um, the best things in sliced bread. Now, uh, what I'll do now is I'll fill in the HLT. The HLT wanted, let's have a look guys here. The sparge water is only eight liters. So I'll fill that with eight liters now. Put my chemicals in. You've probably all seen calcium chloride, Epsom salts, scorpic acid, running out of the gypsum here guys sodium phosphate yeast nutrients so everything's there whatever I need so right that's it um, I'm gonna try and set this up for coming up on tomorrow morning 
so when I get in here the water's on heat it up bang the grains in I won't lie if it hasn't worked you know me I'll follow my sword every time and I'll tell you so uh, I'll see you first thing in the morning Rivaliat about five o'clock I'd say right take care I'll see you in a few seconds right I'll try and show you the delayed start here we go make sure your system is not leaking use lid to save energy use this feature at your own risk okay then I'll tick that then temperature right target target temperature I'm gonna go for 70 six degrees okay time until heating starts so I want it to start at half four give it half an hour to get up to heat so it's six o'clock now so that's six hours or so ten hours yeah ten hours time I think ten hours time Let's go then. I think so. Ten hours from now, it'll be ten past four. <clears throat> yeah, that should be. I'll bang on it. Yeah, ten past four. That's okay. We'll go with that. And there we have it guys, so I'm hoping that's going to work and get me up to temp before I get here in the morning. Simple really, but will it work? So as it says in the instructions, let's put the lid on. In fact, before the lid goes on, I need to put the mash pipe on bang the hat on in the morning see you tomorrow morning guys Borda good morning Alexa what's the time the time is 4 46 a.m. quarter to five Mm -hmm. Got up. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Anyway, seventy-five point two degrees. So I'm nearly there, guys. It worked. So I'll uh, get set up. I'll get the program running now. Send the information over, as we do. Oh, I'm fortunate with the brew tools, really. Um, so, we'll get a brew on. Give me two seconds to sort things out. And we will be having lift off here. I'll see you in a bit, guys. Right, we're on. Five o'clock in the morning. Mash in. Get the ladle up ready. this in give that a bit of a mix guys Remainder in. Happy days. Get this mastered in at 70 degrees and uh, we're away. So, um, 
how that I understand the timer. Very simple really anyway. Uh, it does save a lot of time in the morning anyway. Probably usually takes about, I don't know, 25, 30 minutes. Let's get it up to uh, temp. So, there it goes, 70 degrees, bang on. So I put it at 78 degrees strike. I wanted 70 degrees mash. That alarm was telling me it's at 70. Happy days, we'll get, leave that there for now. Get the pumps going and recirculate. Just wanted to get that floor going because I've got this a bit upright now, haven't I? So, uh, need a bit more pressure on there, really. That's it, I can see it going now. Happy days. Well, if you can just see the circuit recirculation going you see the grains going round or well, the um, foam on the top there going round this way so yeah happy days that's in it takes some time now to get back on to 70 degrees 58 minutes heaters on I'll put the lid back on in, um, in a moment guys then it, it's ramping up no problem at all so that's where we're at I'll uh, not take as much footage today I need to really cut down on the time you guys spend watching my uh, vlogs but um, anything interesting goes on I'll pop the camera on guys so um, that's all for a good brew day so I can finish early Get the rugby on. I'll see you in two ticks. Just a quick one, guys, to let you know the new valve system's working fine and um, no mashing problems at all. Holding steady at 69.6 .6 degrees here. So uh, let's see how that turns out. Multitasking, given the uh, I'm meant to a clean. Try to multitask as much as I can. I know, I know it's not a thing that as men do that often or can do. Um, definitely not as industrious as uh, Harry Brew. He's an industrious little bugger, isn't he? Jeez. Brewing, building an extension. What a man. Anyway, so. Yeah, trying to get everything in order now, whilst this is mashing away, got 31 minutes to go. Hopefully uh, Alexa will kick in on the HLT here, get that going in the next few minutes. Probably take about 20 minutes to warm up that um, spared water. Okay guys, that's it. Two seconds and I'll be back with you. Got a fair few gadgets in here. I like the gadgets um, that come with home brewing tilts and all sorts. Let's see if Alexa brings the HLT on. I'll bring you down. Let's see what she has to say. Oh, that's it. Doesn't say anything, but it's just come on. 16 degrees. We'll be heating up now, and we have 23 minutes. Well, nearly 24 in it to get it going. So, just clean that out with some uh, VWP. I'll be putting some <coughs> Starzan, Chemsan, whatever you want to call it, guys. Get that sorted, put you back up and you purge here to have a look, see what's going. The other, all going well in here, guys. Happy days. Yeah, guys, sparging away. Everything's going fine. 
put the uh, HLT off now. Save some power in it. Get this to finish and uh, get on the boil. There you go, guys. Sparging done and uh, drained all the wort. Worked. Looking at 28.38 litres pre boil. I'm not sure if you can make that out, guys, but take my word for it. It's just a smidgen over 28. So, set up, ready to go. The boil, 87.5 degrees and climbing. All in all, so far, so good. Right, I'll bring you back online when I've got something a bit more interesting. Here we go guys, hit the boil, hot break. Yes. Starting a rolling boil there now. Right, let's get the timer on here guys. Hot bang. Just reminded me it's a 40 minute boil. Better set myself a reminder here guys. Alexa, set reminder for 25 minutes. What's the reminder for? Just remind me. Okay, I'll create a reminder to go off in 25 minutes. Women, eh? Oh, I shouldn't be saying stuff like that. Um, yeah, so set the reminder to get the... Um, yeast nutrients, the... What else is happening? 15 minutes. Maltodextrin. See, I nearly forgot that now, didn't I? Maltodextrin. Yeast nutrients. So it is early in the morning. It is now 6.49, 10 to 7. Let's take you outside, guys. There it is. Yeah, sun of the sun. The uh, moon's still out there. The birds are starting to chirp. Flag's blowing in the wind. Just in case you didn't believe me. So uh, yeah, we'll crack on with this now. Get the timer on. Well, I'm 38 minutes to go. Right then, catch you in a bit. Last 10, 50 minutes, maltodextrin. Helps with the mouthfeel and it thickens up. So ideal for an EPA, really. Last time I did it, tried to get it into the little hole here and all the steam was clogging it, so thought quick in and out, job done. Last five minutes of the boil, um, everything's gone great, so I'll get the temperature down after this to 80 degrees and put 50 grams of Motoweka, 50 grams of Ruaka. Um, that's the only hop addition here. Then it'll be 150 of each on day three dry hop. And uh, it's been a super quick brew day so far. 7.22. Right guys, 80 degrees. Set the timer. I'm already down to 80 minutes for the Whirlpool hop stand and look what I've done see one of the magnets here guys the other side of the magnet with the hook and uh, got the hops in that 
so hopefully uh, it'll stop any hot mats of being in there um, you can see the whirlpool effect got the turbinator in there so that'll collect all the treb in there hopefully and allow the dip tube here to draw on clean water and bring it out through here around and out through this hose and into the fermenter so just want to also wanted to add that ruaka hops what a lovely um, aroma on them so there's 50 grams of ruaka and 50 of motueka gone in I'm gonna bang the lid back on here and hopefully it'll turn out okay so another 17 minutes cool this bad boy down and get it in the so we're at 10.37 we're at 55.4 degrees so if you can read this guys so that should come out as 10.50 original gravity now I'm looking at oh, what was it now 10.50 I think I was looking at 10.16 um, final gravity so let's get that in 1.050 1 1.016 let me just check confirm that with the final gravity yeah I'm looking at about 10.16 Should get four and a half percent out of that, which I'm happy with. Um, but I will allow that to cool down just to confirm everything. Um, I'm not too sure how accurate the thermometer is, so uh, I'll just allow that to gradually cool down by its own accord and give the final results later on. But if I manage that, I'll be more than happy. Ten more minutes on the hop stand. Cool down, get it in the fermenter, bring it down to 20 degrees, and pop that yeast in. Uh, omega, I think it was omega 10. I'm not gonna lie to you, let's, let's get, get it right. Something, something 52 if I remember it rightly, let me see. The yeast, yeast Omega OYL052, that's the one. Right, okay, I'll see you back in a bit, guys. So, we're looking at 10.54 um, on the hydrometer there. Um, might need to check that thermometer out. Um, I'll do some tests on that one. Um, I must admit, I'm very happy with the clarity of that wort. Um, I think it's a good idea to put the hop strainer in there. Um, saves a lot of muck. And I'm hoping that I'll get just over 20, it's a 22 litre batch, so I might get about 23 out of this, all told. Um, well that's what I'm hoping for anyway. So everything's clean. Fermenter's clean. Just pop the tilt hydrometer in there, that's clean. And um, all in all, a great brew day. You've seen me transfer many, many times into the fermenter. I'll not record that. So I'll get this down to as close to 20 as I can. It'll probably be about 25, 26, and I'll allow the fermenter to do um, the rest of the chilling. Once I hit that 20, get that yeast in and job done. Uh, bit of cleaning. Fortunately, the brew tools has CIP clean in place and saves me a lot of hassle. I'll switch it on, go do a bit of shopping, come back and drain it all, and everything should be okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, thanks to my new subscribers. Really appreciate it. 
thanks very much um, Andy Lynch for promoting my channel on um, Daft Cat Brewing um, page, Facebook page um, Sonny has worked at least two or three extra subscribers thank you mate and um, that's it guys I will catch you when I'll be drinking that beer um, I might put this up as it is now and then put a little short one in a couple of weeks time with the results you never know I might get this on today so uh, if you liked what you see just hit the subscribe button hit the like button and uh, please share as much as you can thank you very much for watching take care before I go nearly forgot again pure brew so crushed one tablet and one spoonful of powder in there got a cup or half a cup of water I'll take a water from the kettle that's been pre-boiled let me just put you down here guys I'm gonna mix this file in clean the spoon give it a good old mix very clear and it says to add both into the fermenter so uh, that's what I'm about to do so uh, pure brew and the hop boost file. Catch you later. Let's hope it makes a difference.